NFTs are crashing. Well, sort of. You know, the problem is I've seen this pattern before many, many a time. And unfortunately, I think we're going down that same road again. Now, this isn't to say that people are not interested in NFTs anymore. In fact, that couldn't be furthest from the truth. People still constantly buying them and getting them on secondaries and mints and whatnot. They're still flying, believe me. But the problem is we are encountering something that has happened many times in the past. And no matter what we do, there's no way to really avoid this. That is the inevitable fact that Ethereum and Solana are going up. And as much as I love that and as a long-term investor, believe me, I could not wish for something better to see two assets I love going up in value. But the problem is this makes it very, very tough for the average NFT investor. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how this usually works and some strategies you guys can implement to hopefully make some more money as NFT may take a bit of a dip. Again, this is not the worst NFT crash I think we're going to see, but I do see some impending downtrend in the next month or so. Okay, so first things first, when I say crash, I am not actually talking about volume. I believe NFT volume will still continue to explode and grow exponentially over the next few months here. I don't see there being any less people buying and selling NFTs. However, what I do see happening is more sell volume than buy volume. And unfortunately, that typically leads to the price going down. And this happens very, very often, even in the crypto industry, with just altcoins, where you'll see, say, Shiba Inu or Dogecoin having a really, really high volume day, but it is still down. And that's because more people, unfortunately, are selling than are buying. So for February, you know, we're only a few days in and it is still already creeping its way up there uh making it past definitely much of beginning of 2021 only in a few days of course same thing here with OpenSea. you guys can see the volume here is still pretty nuts for february it definitely does rival the majority of january so that's not to say there isn't any interest in nfts because that's the furthest thing from the truth there are a lot of people who are still interested in trading nfts on the platform same thing here when we check OpenSea, are any of these overwhelmingly down in volume not really there are a few that are around a break even point like Azuki here CryptoPunks down a tiny bit but the rest looks to be mostly in the green but take a look at something take a look at these floor prices are any of these floor prices much higher than they were a week ago not really especially hape prime down all the way down to five uh, hype bears not doing what uh, i was hoping it would have done uh, after its launch so there are a lot of projects here that just feel a little stagnant doodles azuki i can keep going and going a lot of these projects look a little stagnant and again most people watching this video including myself cannot afford most of these projects on here but i do think they're good indicators as to the health of the market now for any further guys if you guys are enjoying make sure to check out my patreon down below in the descriptions so you guys can see exactly Exactly what NFTs I am buying and selling, as well as getting access to my exclusive NFT watch list, as well as access to group calls and coaching for Emerald tiers and above, private chats for all patrons on Discord, and so much more. To be honest with you guys, I think it's a steal for only $10 a month. Link down below. So why is the volume down? Why do none of these floors look as good as they normally do? Well, unfortunately, that's because people want more liquidity. So when we take a look at Coin Market Cap, you guys can see Ethereum is performing pretty hot, up 15% over the past seven days. Days. Some other altcoins that are very, very popular, you guys can see, are also performing extremely well over the past seven days, including Decentraland, which uh, is one of my biggest holdings out there, so I definitely can't complain about this. But what I love about Ethereum going up, of course, is the fact that this means our NFTs are worth more right? Well, that's a double-edged sword because unfortunately, while yes, Ethereum going up is fantastic for the overall value of our portfolio, the problem is people will often liquidate their NFTs to get more Ethereum. This is a very, very common theme. I have participated in this myself because let's be honest, who wants to be caught holding the bag? No one. And it's a very smart strategy to do. As you watch Ethereum or Solana go up in value, the best thing you could do is take some NFTs that are worth a certain floor that you don't see growing uh, you know, exponentially in the next week or two, try to sell them and then perhaps re-enter as Ethereum is either cheaper or perhaps re-enter as the floor goes down. Because chances are that in the next week or two, something is going to happen. Either Ethereum and Solana take a little bit of a dip and the NFT floor goes back up again, or chances are Ethereum and Solana keep going up and the floors keep going down. This is something you're going to have to try to bet on as best possible, but definitely do put some thought into it, put some research into it, because again, you can get very, very unlucky. And I've had it happen to me before 
as well, where the floor of an NFT skyrockets, then the value of the base token goes up, and then you're caught with an NFT that's worth virtually nothing anymore. One of the prime examples of this is Soulpunks. This is the first NFT I ever bought back in last August. And take a look at this, folks. I ended up buying it here. I guess it was late July at the time because I actually ended up buying it uh, at around a price of nine Solana. So July 28th would be somewhere around when I first bought this. And take a look at this, guys. Surges all the way up to an insanely high price. The floor was around 45 Solana. And me being dumb, I said, hey, I'll hold on to it. It's going to be the next Board Ape Yacht Club. Let me hold on to it. And sure enough, it continues just to plunge. Same thing, has a couple other runs, but then plunges. And the reason why I held on to it is because I did not realize that as Solana appreciated in value, the floor would eventually go down. And that's exactly what happened. As the value of Solana went from $80, $90 from when I bought it, all the way up to around $250 at one point, Soulpunks, as a result, suffered. And the floor, unfortunately, has not recovered since. So if I, would have, if I was a smart uh, investor at that time, which at the time, again, I was, and I was very inexperienced, at that time, I would have said, hey, man, I'm going to take my profits right now and perhaps rebuy once the value of Solana goes back down again and catch that floor while it's low. So something like that is, again, just a lesson I wanted to share with you guys and definitely don't make that mistake that I made back last year. So there are a few strategies you guys could do to try to catch when this is going to happen. Now, the first thing I think is definitely looking for high versus low volume days. If there is a day that has insanely high volume, then that might be a good time to ape into a project on secondary because uh, when we take a look here at OpenSea, let's say, you know, most of these projects are down in terms of volume. In fact, the majority of them. And, you know, when you see something like this, it's an indicator that, hey, might not be the best day to ape into an NFT because there likely just isn't enough people buying new projects to sustain me aping in and making a lot of money on secondary. Now, if these were all in the green, you know, it might be a better time to do so. And I think a great option as well, just to look on Twitter, you'll get a good indicator, a good vibe about how the day is going just by following some people who are very experienced in the NFT space. So that's definitely a good option out there to try in hopes to get a better grounding on, you know, how the market is going to react on a particular day. Now, another thing you guys could do is just to try to avoid secondaries completely for a little bit. That means only focusing on mints and mints really are probably the safest overall most profitable idea for those that just want to make virtually guaranteed money on NFTs. Now, of course, nothing's a guarantee, but mints are probably the safest option for those that want to try to make some money right off the bat because most mints within the first half an hour hour basically will double on the secondary market and then sometimes they'll bleed downwards and eventually might go sub mint at some point. But if you want to try to make a quick flip during that hour or so, definitely just minting something and then listing it immediately for around double on secondary probably is the best option uh, for those that are looking just to make some easy money at the start and not take any major. Another thing you could try to do is to invest in passive income NFTs. There are a lot of them out there that are particularly fantastic uh, and have made people a lot of money. And again, something like this, probably a little bit lower uh, in susceptibility to crash in terms of floor. Here's an example of a passive income project I do not own, but I'm extremely jealous of those who do own. Senshi Samurai here uh, had a floor of around like Five, surged up to a floor of like 40, then had a crash back down to a floor of 0.5, and then surged back up to a floor of 21. One of the most wild uh, exchanges in recent time. Um, but while Solana and Ethereum are pumping, I see this community being so strong that I don't particularly think the floor will crash on this. The majority of these are staked online, and I don't think that there will be uh, many people who are rushing to get rid of their Senshi while they're making passive income. And the very final thing I could tell you guys is just to monitor the floors. If there's a project you want to enter, but you're not feeling particularly great about the market on that particular day, watch the floor. Watch the floor for when Ethereum and Solana have a little bit of a dip and perhaps consider that as a time to ape in. Again, ideally, guys, you want to be adding to your liquidity when the coins are cheap and you want to be adding your NFTs to your collection while they are pumping because that's the best of both worlds. If you get an NFT that's continuously going up, hey, you've made a lot of money on that NFT. And if you're able to sell that NFT while while it is high before Ethereum and Solana end up pumping up, that's also the best thing you guys could do. So the easiest way to think about this is just whenever Ethereum and Solana are down, try to dollar cost average into where you're constantly adding new Ethereum and new Solana or Terra Luna or whatever you're using near protocol, whatever NFT uh, you know currency you use. If you want to add to your liquidity, whenever there's a red day, think about picking up a little bit more. And whenever vice versa, there's uh, a day where the floor is dropping on a particular NFT, 
maybe consider adding that NFT to your collection on that day. So it might sound obvious, but it actually is a little tougher than you might think at first. It definitely is going to take some trial and error. So that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you guys did, make sure to drop a like, subscribing, and check out my Patreon down below in the description. My name is Matt. See you guys on the next one. Peace.